Hi, I'm Carl and today I'm going to try to show you how to make the most of the yellowfin tuna. I've been catching tuna for over 30 years off the coast of North Carolina and over that time I've learned how to really take care of them and to cut them in a way that maximizes the yield that you get and gives you the best possible product. If you're looking for how to cut fish quick and dirty, you're in the wrong place today. But if you want to learn how to really do it right, just stay with me for a few more minutes and we'll show you. We were lucky enough to go fishing a couple of days ago and caught some nice yellowfin tunas. The fish I'm going to be working on today uh, was about a 50 pounder. And what I'm going to do is to cut it and show you exactly what to do so that when you only have one or two or maybe even a dozen, you get all of it that you can. The first thing I would tell you is I love the guys at the fish cleaning station at the dock, but I would never let those guys touch my fish. It's not that they don't know what they're doing, but they're paid for what it weighs going in and not what it weighs coming out. And so speed is the most important thing for them. So they cut quick and they leave a lot. And they also cut it the same day it's caught. If you don't get anything else out of this video today, remember this. Don't ever cut a yellowfin tuna on the same day you catch it, unless you need one to have for supper that night. Let me repeat that. Don't ever cut them on the same day you get them. The only thing that you want to do to start with is head it, gut it, and pack it in ice. Once it's headed and gutted and buried in ice, you can hold that fish for up to a week and not lose any quality from it. The other thing is, is that over time when it's cold, all the juices in it, all the bloodiness will go away. That will retreat into the meat. It's kind of like aging a deer or another animal. The product that you get, the meat, instead of being messy and bloody, is clean, it's translucent, it's firm, uh, the fish skin better, the meat is a much higher quality. So the first day, the only thing that you want to do is head it, gut it, bury it in ice. You need to do that, you need a, a serrated knife which you'll put in around the gills at the head and cut through. Make a little slit at the anus of the fish about that long, stick your finger in, hook it around the intestine, pull it out and cut it off. That way when you cut the head off, the entire guts will come out, you can wash it out. The whole process of heading and gutting a tuna takes about a minute, that's it. And then what you can do is stack them in your cooler. The other advantage to heading them and gutting it is it reduces the amount of volume that the fish takes up and so that you can pack more fish into a cooler. Now I'm going to get one that we've already headed and gutted and we'll go from there. Okay, here we have a 50 pound yellowfin tuna. As you can see, it has no head, it has no gut. Its body cavity is packed full of ice. This fish is absolutely perfect. It's still bright, has beautiful color on it. It's been preserved and, and the quality of this fish is going to be absolutely first rate. Now the first thing that I do when I'm doing one is I remove the uh, pectoral fin and the collar. Come in behind the pectoral fin with a serrated knife, slice down and through, and remove the part uh, up to the front. Now this may have had a little bit of water on the cut section, but you're going to cut that off. I spin it around, come in the other side, cut down, and I remove this collar. There may be a little bit of meat in there. I'm going to show you about scraping in a little while. That has now exposed the belly. The bellies are not really good to hang on to a, a fillet because they're thin. They tend to tear. But what I do with them and with the narrow part of the tail is I save them. I brine them in salt water and spices and then I will smoke them. And the smoked tuna makes the most wonderful tuna spread that you can imagine. 
it's so much in demand that I make a lot of it when we catch them in the fall and I give that smoked tuna spread away as Christmas presents. People that I've given it to will tell me that it's one of the top 10 best things they ever put in their mouth. But back to the fish, we come in here and we cut all the way down to the tail. And you can see that opens up that part of the belly of the fish. We're going to repeat the process on the other side. I turn the fish over, I come in, cut behind the pectoral fin, down to the head, and remove that collar. Again, I'll show you in a minute, we can scrape out some good uh, tuna out of that collar, which can be used for making hand rolls or for other purposes. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to remove the belly from this side. As you see, I get a triangular piece of meat. This is a belly is about three quarters of an inch thick. There are these uh, additional fins at the front. I'm going to come in right behind them. And I'm going to cut these off because this is really bony. And then I've got this piece of uh, fish that will go in my smoker. Because these are, are pretty big, I'm going to cut them in half so they'll be easier to manage on the smoker. And I'm going to set these aside. Now, um, I like to cut from the tail to the head. Some people are different, but I find my knife can follow the fish better if I start at the tail and move to the head. And the first side that you work on is going to be your best side. Uh, those fillets are going to be more perfect, or those loins are going to be more perfect. And I like to start and cut with the fish facing me because that's where I'm going to make my cut. As I said a minute ago, I also like to save the tails for smoking. As the loins come down toward the tail, the amount of connective tissue that's in there gets greater and the cross section of the loin gets smaller, so you can't really cut a steak out of it. But there's a lot of good, good meat to be had in there. So what I do is I cut a triangular section out of the base of each of the tails so that I can have that and save that to smoke it. This way, when I end the loins, they're still big enough to either be a steak or, you know, a, a medallion of tuna. Now what we're going to want to do is there are two things, that, two ways that you can deal with the skin on a tuna. One is you can cut the loins out with the skin on them and then skin them as you need to. And that's usually what you need to do if you're talking about a big eye that's 150 pounds or a blue fin that may be 600. But for yellow fins, if they've been uh, chilled in ice for a few days, the skin loosens up a little bit and it makes it easier to skin them. And my preference is, is go ahead and rip the skin off. I've seen things where they have special pliers and all kinds of grabbers and stuff like that. You don't really need that, especially if you've let the fish sit up for a day. But what we need to do is we're going to cut an outline all the way around the fish, just through the skin. And I warn you, when you get up close to the front, there's some hard skin that's up here near this fin. And sometimes you just kind of have to power your way through. So I've done a line all the way around the top of the fish. I'm going to turn it around so that I can make the same cut down the bottom side. And then where the fish has been cut here, if I didn't cut this loose a little bit, when I pull the skin off it would try to tear this bottom part. So I'm going to come in just under the skin along the belly and I'm going to cut that down so it will release easier. And I'm going to come in under the skin here where I'm starting it to make sure that it releases well too. So now I've basically 
draw my line all the way around the fish. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip the skin off. Starting at the head, get a good grip on it, and work your way down. If it gets a little slippery, you can take your knife and stick it in, make a little hole in the skin so you can get your fingers through, and then you can just rip it all the way down. The skin comes right off. Now I'm 67 years old, and I will tell you that if I was trying to do that on the same day I caught this fish, I'd be struggling with it and everything, and it would be giving me a hard time. Now what I'm going to want to do is come in at the tail of this fish and there's a set of bones that go all the way up the middle of the fish. There's another set of bones that runs perpendicular to those that goes up between the top loin and the bottom loin. So starting at the back, I want to come in until and point my knife down a little bit so that I can feel those bones and run my knife down them so I can feel my knife hitting on those bones. So I've made a cut that separates it from that set of bones and then we'll turn it around. I can actually see the bones in the middle and what I want to do is come in on the top side of that row of bones and make a cut that goes all the way down the fish. So now I've cut it from the top, I've cut it from the bottom, and I've cut it loose at the top, and now what's going to happen if I've done this right, is I'm going to remove just a big log of meat, which is the whole top loin of the tuna. And you can see that there are indentations in the meat, and that's where each one of the rib bones have been. This knife has come down all the way along all of the rib bones. Now what I usually do is to have a separate cooler that's got ice in it, and it's got trays in it so I can take it out and just lay all the loins down in that other cooler until I'm ready to fancy dress them, cut the bloodline out, which I'll show you in a minute. Years and years ago, we were down in Hatteras and caught some bluefin tuna, and we had a man from Japan that was with us. And he showed me a trick then that I've been using for the last 20 or 25 years when I cut tunas. I love tuna all different kinds of ways, grilled, pan seared, you, you name it. But my favorite way to eat tuna is to not cook it at all. And uh, if you like uh, sushi and sashimi, one of the things that I have learned to do is to come in and scrape all of the meat that we would otherwise lose if we just threw the carcass away. Along the center, and in between all the ribs, there is good meat, which is which can be scraped out and then used to make tuna hand rolls or to make uh, 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 takamaki rolls and things like that. And all you need is a spoon, two bowls. You put ice in the bigger bowl and use the smaller bowl to put your tuna in. And then all along the backbone, there is going to be usable meat. You don't want to scrape so hard that you get into the bloodline, but you can come in here and remove spoonful after spoonful of tuna. And this tuna has that I'm taking out here has no uh, connective tissue in it. It's just absolutely soft and when you put it in a roll, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Sometimes I'll mix it with um, soy sauce, and uh, powdered ginger and sesame oil and do it that way 
or uh, mix it, mix up some spicy mayo with chili paste and mayonnaise. But anyway, when you're done scraping this off, usually when I clean a, 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 a bunch of tunas, I'll end up with a, with a gallon, you know, five pounds or more of prime um, tuna that would otherwise just get wasted. All right, now we've done one side, it's time to take out the bottom loin. And what I'm going to do here is similar. I'm going to come in, I'm going to get on the bones at the bottom, and I'm going to follow those bones up to about here. And then there are a set of bones that go right through here. And once you get it started and you're on the bones, when I get to here, I'm just going to make a big cut through and hopefully separate all that out. So now I'm on the bones. I can feel it. You can even hear it kind of rocking through. And then I get to here, and I'll just cut all the way up. Sometimes it's necessary. This was actually a pretty good cut. But there's a set of bones that are right here, and sometimes it's necessary to free them up just a little bit so that we can get that, that loin out. That's cut all the way down. And then just like with the top loin, there's that set of bones down the middle. So we're going to come in on the other side of those, and we're going to cut all the way down until we meet in to our bottom cut. Now having done that, we can remove the bottom loin and sometimes it'll hang up right here at the top and all you need is a little quick cut through and then this whole loin comes out. This down the middle is the blood meat. Uh, this is not really your friend because it's not poisonous or anything, it's just extremely fishy. So real quick, I'm going to go ahead and remove what I didn't get between the bones on this side. And up at the top, there'll be a little bit up here that I can get. And then we're basically done. So I've gotten a half a bowl of good tuna scrape. That's what we call it. We call it scrape or mush, whatever you want. Now we've got this section back here at the tail. And again, what we're going to do with this is we're going to brine this and smoke it. And then once it's been smoked, the skin will just peel all the way off of this. And you can use it for um, making the, the dip. You can see when you get down to the tail, the, these things are not big enough across to, to be really worthwhile, so that's the best use of that. Now that we've removed both the top loin and the bottom loin, what we've got left is this center section of blood meat. Now I'm going to flip the tuna over to, to repeat the process on the other side, but to make it lay flat, I'm going to take my serrated knife and I'm going to come in and cut through all those bones all the way and I'm going to remove that. This is also a good time to take a look and there may be a few little scrape, scraps here and there that I missed the first time around. But basically now you can see that what we have done is we've come in in between the ribs on top and the bottom and removed all that meat so there's really nothing left on here. And now we're going to flip it over and do the other side. Now that we've removed uh, all of the loins on one side and cut it down, it's now laying flat on the table and we're basically going to repeat the process on the other side. Make our cut at the tail for the piece that we're going to save for smoking. And we come in as we did before. Draw a line all the way around the fish. Come in at the belly so we don't tear the belly meat. Come up to the top, separate it loose from the top.
we're going to skin the top. Sometimes the uh, skin will hang up and you need to trim it loose a little bit if it's giving you a hard time. One side of the fish will always skin a little bit easier. The first side that you do is usually easier to manage because see as I'm pulling it up this was giving me a hard time. But if you try to push straight instead of pulling it up, push against it you can uh, usually keep it keep it down or if you have to you can use the tail alright so again I usually like to take the top loins out first come in find the bones and go straight down Come in at the top, find the bones at the top, come straight down the fish. So you've cut it loose. And this loin should come straight out. Sometimes I hang up a little bit at the top. And again, when you pull it out, you got one solid, gorgeous chunk of tuna. Again, you'll see we've got uh, tuna that's left on even though the knife went down the bones. We can scrape that out later. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Now we've removed the bottom one. Again, there's uh, plenty of tuna that we can get off of here. Scrape along the top. In between all the ribs. Cut out the tailpiece on this side. Gather up whatever else is left. And now we're done. And as you can see, if you do it right, there's virtually nothing left on this fish except for the bones. That's how you do it. You ready? Yeah. Action. Okay. Now that we've worn the fish out, you could stop right here if you wanted to. The first tuna I ever ate uh, had a section of dark meat in it when it was grilled up, which is the, the, the bloodline of the fish. But I like to remove it because it's just better that way and, and it doesn't take that much time. As you can see, down the middle of it there's some residual bloodline. And this 
anatomically has some connective tissue around it which is real helpful for figuring out where you want to cut to remove that. If you don't remember anything other than what I told you before to remember, remember this. When you cut, remember this. Draw. Don't saw. If you're doing this, you're doing something wrong. You want to have a sharp knife so that you can just draw and make a smooth cut. Your product will be a lot better. Now what I'm going to do on this one, this is the top loin. It has no additional bones left in it. The only thing I need to do is to remove that bloodline. And I'm going to turn it so that I can see better what I'm doing. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to take my knife in and I'm going to find the edge of this bloodline. And my knife is going to go right along in there. And sometimes it helps to just put your finger behind the knife and just move it through. And it gets thinner and thinner as we go until we get to the end and we just cut through. Then I'm going to go back again I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to position my knife so that it can ride down the edge of that bloodline and I'll make a series of passes that are going down so that I can gently remove all of the bloodline but try not to remove any of the good fish when I'm doing it. I guarantee you at the fish cleaning station if, if you don't want any of the bloodline on it they're gonna cut a half an inch of good meat off so it looks pretty but you're gonna lose it. If you do it yourself and you do it the right way you maximize your yield, and that's what we're all about, making the most of your tuna. I'm going to make one little cut all the way down the length of it to get the last of the residual. I'll pull that out, and I see that there's just a sixteenth of an inch of blood meat in a couple of places. I'm going to remove that. It wouldn't kill you. You wouldn't even notice it, but you know, if I'm going to be doing this the right way and showing y'all how to do it, I need to get that out of there. Now you've got a loin left that has no bones, no bloodline. It's just absolutely perfect, and that's all you could get off of the top loin of that fish. Now the bottom loin is going to have a little bit of residual bones in it from around the abdomen. It's just like any other fish. You want to come in and get just under the bones where they are and we're just going to trim them away. We're going to use those bones as a guide and we're just simply going to follow them around and, and remove the, uh, the bones, following them as close as we can so that we preserve as much of the fish as possible. We'll come down that side of it. Now we've removed that. It was just a little bit hanging on. If you really wanted to get everything, you could take your spoon and scrape that. I'll draw the line somewhere. Now there's um, some blood meat on this side. We're going to come down the same as we did on the other side. We want to get just the blood meat. We're going to follow that natural anatomy. You can almost run your, your finger in. The doctors would call that doing blunt dissection when you run your fingers in. And if you do a combination of blunt and sharp dissection, you can get all of that stuff out. Trim away all of the bad, leaving all of the good. Now once we cut the bloodline out, now we have two long boneless, bloodless sections of prime yellowfin tuna. 
sewing shirt with socks in it. Why would now the question is, what, what do you do with it now? Um, if you've got a vacuum sealing machine, you can take these whole loins and drop them in and then vacuum seal the whole loins. If you don't, the general guide that I have for people is to tell them, leave the fish in as large a piece as possible for as long as possible. And if you buy meat or chicken or something in the grocery store, each one of those little styrofoam packs that's in there has this little absorbent in the bottom of it. It may look kind of like cotton or whatever or a packet or something. The purpose of that is to absorb any um, ooze that comes from, from the meat. Same thing with, with the tuna. I learned from the Japanese who, who uh, prepare fish and keep fish in sushi restaurants. What you're going to want to do is to wrap the uh, meat and package it in uh, uh, Ziploc bags or vacuum pack it if you've got it. If you don't, we'll pack it in Ziploc bags and I can show you how to do that right now. Now that we've got our loins down to the, where we want them, and now we're going to cut them into appropriate size pieces to bag them up. I use either gallon size Ziplocs or sometimes the two gallon size. And what you want to do is you want to cut a section that will just fit in and fill up uh, the bag. I mean, I've done a bunch of them, so I kind of know about how much we're going to do. But if you need to use the bag for a guide, you can do that. And I know that it's going to be about like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a roll of paper towels and pull out a section of it. And then I'm going to put the loin on and I'm going to wrap it in the paper towel. This will collect any of the ooze that's on it and keep you from ending up having a bloody mess in a bag and you take it out and it's all oozy and it doesn't look good and you know you don't want it like that. And it also, if you're going to keep fish for a while, if you do this and you wrap them in the plastic wrap and have them in the bag, as long as you keep them buried in ice, They'll, they'll last for, you know, a week. I wouldn't push it much longer than a week. But that's in ice, in a cooler. If you stick them in your refrigerator, people open the door, close the door, it's only about 35 degrees at the best of times. So if you want to hold on to your fish, um, then uh, keep it on ice. Now this is what's known as doing the poor man's vacuum sealer. If you put, if you put the fish in the bag, and you close all of it but the corner. Suck all the air out of it. It's almost like vacuum sealing it. Now some people will drop it into a bucket of water or something and squeeze all the air out. That, that works too, but for me it's just as easy just to pinch it and, and suck the air out. So we'll do another one. And you can see that you get, I mean this, the quality of this meat when you do it this way is just phenomenal. It's not, it's not uh, bloody, it's not opaque. If I take a piece of this and cut it, if we had done this on the same day that we caught it, it would be a bloody mess. But this, this, you can hold it up, you can see through it. It's just, it's just a rosy, beautiful, glistening, and that's all because it got taken care of from the very beginning. I also bleed all my tunas when they're on the boat. It helps a lot. And, and some people try to cut them behind the peck fin and cut them on the tail and do all this fancy stuff. The best way I have found to do it that doesn't risk damage to any of the meat is to go in right behind the gill plate and cut through the gills, if you can get both sides, great. The blood will just pour out of them because all the blood in that tuna has got to get through the, the gills because that's how the tuna breathes. Anyway, same thing. We we'll take a big chunk, drop it on the paper towel. I don't recommend using cheap paper towels. If you use cheap paper towels, they'll all kind of fall apart. Um, use some that are nice and thick and sturdy. 
and, and you'll be happy about that. Anyway, if you, if you do this, you fill up a bag. You know, I could put another loin in there and maybe get the whole thing, but that's, that's a good, you know, uh, chunk of tuna to have for grilled tuna or sashimi or sushi for a family or, you know, to give to your friends or neighbors or whatever. But basically from this point, you know, that's how, that's how you do one, and I hope you get a dozen, and then you'll really enjoy it. Thank you. I hope you learned something today, and uh, uh, maybe tune in, and we'll cut something else next time.